Today we will be removing capacitors from this circuit board. They are swelled up and had gone bad. We're going to be removing four of these capacitors. Only three are bad, but the fourth one I have the same value, so I might as well replace it too. In doing so, I have a desoldering iron, which has a pressure ball when you're just basically sucking the lead or the solder off the leads of the capacitor. Normally, you would put flux down the, on your pins to increase better solder flow in, in order to remove it. Now, you want to take and get a an old candle or something that you're not using that you can spit the wax back in into and it won't mess up anything. Here I have an old candle I've got a brass fitting in there that I'm not using so I'm just, it's just a solder collection basically and we'll just spit it back in there when we get done. And you also want to have a tray which it comes with the desoldering iron that you can put it down on. You don't want to put it on the surface of the wood, it won't burn it because it gets about 400 to 600 degrees. So let's begin. Let's see if I can get this in the camera view so you can see what I'm doing. Our next step would to be to resolder the connection to which it took off. Normally you won't be using this fat of a tip in order to solder a smaller component. I just got this iron hot. It's not incredibly hot, but hot enough to melt the solder. And basically all we're going to be doing is be tinning. Now, after you reheat it, you go through and make sure you get all the solder off of it again. We can take and make sure your capacitor, you can wiggle it and pull it out. Now, you want to note the direction of the capacitor and make sure they have the direction of the capacitor on the board before you do remove it. Otherwise, when you remove the capacitor, you just going to not remember which one it is. You see there's lines that are on the board. These lines here represent the negative and the clear side would be the positive. So we're going to do these for the next three capacitors. This is the negative line it has an air hole to go down with the cap so when you do replace the cap make sure you have the negative line with the lines on the board that way you're not crossing positive and negative after you pull your capacitors out of the board that you just looked at you go to ebay or radio shack you'll probably find a higher price for the capacitors that we pulled out of this board here I have three of them. Three boards are the same. They're Ethernet switches. And so I needed 12 capacitors. Radio Shack sells them for about a buck and a half. This site here, Mauser.com, sells them for 45 cents each if I order 20 of them. So I'm saving a lot of money there. Um, you want to make sure that your voltages are within range. These were 25 volts what I got with 35 volts just for safety measures. So operating temperature range, I want to make sure you get that within range. These were 105 degrees Celsius range. Radio Shack did not sell them that way. They have an 85 degree operating temperature. Spacings and dimensions, you want to make sure that's the right size because if this is in a case, you don't want one that's too big either way. You want to make sure the lead spacing is the same distance from pin to pin. This is the 5 millimeter lead from pin to pin. It is 10 inches in diameter, 16 inches long from bottom to top. 
Now after you get them back in the mail, you just put them back in however you took them out. It would be, uh, I'm replacing these four capacitors here. All the negatives are facing towards the edge of the board. I will give that update when I get these in. Thanks for watching my videos. Subscribe. Wait.